the total technocratic tiptoe to tyranny. Step one, create a terrifying enemy. If you've watched enough cartoons like I have usually, the first step is considered a doozy. This one though, man, this step is easier than your grandma. False flags, the old shuck and jive, a grand scale conceptual art form as old as time, as heretic as Lucifer. Take 9-11, perhaps the most referenced false flag in history. The emotion felt across the globe after 9-11 was one of shock, of anger, most predominantly sadness. Those pesky jihadists we said as we waved our fists at nothing but a concept like an old man waving at his incorrectly fitted colostomy bag. But luckily, and I say this with as much sarcasm as I can possibly communicate, luckily as a preemptive, postemptive strike, a rare group of extremely efficient bureaucrats somehow managed to cut through the octopus of red tape to push through the US Patriot Act in record time. No fuss. No muss, no research, no debate, nothing. Some even suggest that the Cabal drafted the Patriot Act at least a decade ahead of time. Not me though, I wouldn't dare suggest such a thing. I mean, given they forced us into a global war with a noun, terror, the war on terror, we're at war with a noun. Given that they did that, well, our hands were tied, weren't they? What else could we do but encourage the public to dob on a neighbor? How else could we react? other than to induce police to stop and search any old freak with a bulge in his pocket. It's a tough time for those of us with huge cocks, I've got to tell you. You remember not two shakes after the controlled demolition of Building 7? Were we encouraged to say something if we saw something? That's the purpose of the false flag. Engineer a disaster, manufacture an enemy to unite a population against, and swiftly implement sweeping measures to ensure such an event will never happen again. I urge you to look these up if you don't know them. The Gulf of Tonkin. False flag. Operation Northwoods. False flag. The Japanese invasion of Manchuria. False flag. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand as a catalyst to begin World War I. Yep. False flag. Not even a year after the implementation of the Federal Reserve, by the way. Just food for thought. More recently, the Port Arthur massacre in Australia, the Christchurch mosque shootings. They both resulted in the death of gun rights in those countries. The anthrax attacks post 9-11. Do I need to slap my hand on the desk? I do not. False flag. All of these were crafted to strip the citizenry of liberties, all designed to herd us into a manageable corner of a paddock where the grass certainly ain't greener. The false flag, a meticulously scripted, terrifying threat, secretive and evil. It's the perfect sleight of hand to rouse the public onto the side of government that sees hordes of nuff nuffs sprinting to hand over their rights to a tightening regime claiming their actions as benevolent. For the greater good. For the greater good. COVID-19? <laughs> false flag. And we see the effects of such shenanigans, don't we? We're seeing it today. It transfers family units into enemy combatants, church congregations into split factions, strong nations into borderless quagmires. Or is it quagmire? Giggity. And we'll continue fighting with each other, bickering, until we all consume ourselves to a point of fecklessness. Now, uh, just to be clear, for the hardcore conspiracy theorists out there, not everything is a false flag. Dangers exist. Life has inherent risks. We understand this. Maybe, legitimately, there is a jihadist charging a movie theatre just itching to blow your infidel ass to smithereens. Maybe there is. But what would you prefer? A solitary suicide bomber? Or an active cell of globalist elites frothing at the gash to strip you of dignity for their own gain? Give me the skinny Arab boy baying for a virgin gangbang on a cloud any day of the week. The sound of hymen splitting, blood painting the clouds red. 72 virgins, that's a lot of blood.
Step two, create a gulag. In this wonderful age we live in, the word gulag, it seems a tad overplayed, doesn't it? Particularly in a vernacular hinging on dark humour to downplay the overtly tragic. You call it what you want though. The gulag, the concentration camp, the National Resilience Centre, the International Quarantine Bungalow. A planet-wide prison system operating outside of the law exists. And as we speak, people, people you may even know, for unjustifiable reasons, are being dragged to these places against their will. Oh, but it can't happen here. Not to me. I always behave. Oh, good for you, Jack. But mark my words, it's not just those living outside of society to be harangued into these camps. Let's look at my home country, Australia, as the most extreme example during COVID times. Regular people are being accosted by police, taken from their homes without due process, and yanked away to what is literally called a national resilience centre. Who came, whoever came up with that is my hero. People are being taken to these centres for an undisclosed time period. Like, we're not at concentration camp level yet, but comparative to that of 1930s Europe, we're in about 1937, and the persecuted are starting to become a little more nervous. Only now, though, in modernity, we're not only trying to avoid the physical gulag, but there is also the ever-present threat of the digital gulag. Let me explain. Rally against the government, or show any sign of dissident behaviour. Say goodbye to your bank account, man. Your email address, your ability to shop, to cruise social media, to own a domain name to write a blog or record a podcast. I'm doing this podcast from Guantanamo Bay as we speak. That's why I got the good cigar. Actually, it's funny, you know, sitting here in Guantanamo Bay, which is Cuba smoking a Dominican, and uh, the guards are none the wiser. Mmm, silky. But in all seriousness, across history, We've witnessed such enslavement time and time again, yet we never seem to learn, we never seem to understand the template that they use. It's pretty easy. Create the terror, build the gulag, and the majority will flock toward the saggy tit of government like a horny hog to a hole in the fence. Left or right, doesn't matter. Once members of opposition, civil leaders, labor activists, and dissenting voices are removed, there will be zero opposition to the government. Absolute consensus. Scary notion, no? Step three, develop a thug cast. And I don't mean uh, break your leg and have some legit street gang tag your plaster cast. I mean this, the simplest way to shut down an open society. And that's to send paramilitary style mobs out onto the street to harass citizens. It's the best way to describe it. You remember the Italian black shirts, they beat up the commies. The brown shirts held Germany hostage, Antifa murdered Trump supporters. Black Lives Matter destroyed small businesses in the same communities they professed to defend. Sending in a lynch mob of immune agent provocateurs is a tactic older than your mama's bunion. And once the citizenry becomes adequately panicked, roll out the mercenaries to restore the peace. It's easy. Step four, switch on an internal surveillance system. Is this beginning to sound familiar to you? What with all the manufactured violence on the streets? Well, it's time to ramp up surveillance. Once an open society is effectively shut down, a branch division of secret police are coming to your town. I had that written down. The Stasi of Nazi Germany, they spied on ordinary people and actively encouraged the public to spy on its neighbors, to dob in a Jew. Dob in an anti-vaxxer, what's the difference? Two nuts of the same gorilla. Render the average citizen scared to even scratch themselves. It's game over, mate. With the tracking devices in our pockets, with roving hordes of secret police, with our voyeuristic preoccupation with sticking our noses in the business of others, we are existing in a daycare centre. Take it from Edward Snowden. Arguing that you don't care about the right to privacy because you have nothing to hide does not differ from saying you don't care about freedom of speech because you have nothing to say. So in a closed society, surveillance passes as national security, but the true function is to keep citizens docile in order to inhibit dissent. The question is, how docile are you? 
The kid that worked down at the local Baskin Robbins got a tattoo of a lipstick print attached above his collar. I watched him relocating pistachio to a waffle, thinking I had lost the plot if not the passion for the novel. He asked me what I wanted. I ordered something daft. He said he liked the tattoo Alex drew me of the bets. Thanks. Now, I don't mean to come across as accusatory. I am um, using the word you, but also including me. We really must take time to reflect and develop our sense of self in order to beat this. Step five, harass citizen groups. You remember that Polish church in Toronto, Canada, a few months ago, maybe a year ago or so now, whose minister preached Jesus was in favour of peace. And for doing that, he found himself investigated by the tax department for the incitement of domestic terrorism via hate speech. People support it. This mode of harassment, though, it's commonplace, especially in this present age of gaslightment. If I were the devil, I'd subvert the churches with a campaign of whispers. I'd whisper that the Bible is a myth, convince the clergy that man created God, not the other way around. I'd label religion as extremism, confide that what is bad is good and what is good is square. With the wisdom of a serpent, says Paul Harvey, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. Once nothing matters in the eyes of the individual, once society is majority nihilistic, it is putty in the hands of the powers that be. And you can do it too. You can participate in this day of inclusivity where we all must participate and receive a trophy for doing so. You can do it too, man. Infiltrate a church group, a mother's clique, a Proud Boys chapter, a trucker's protest and report your very own stylized brand of disinformation. Go on, do it, make something up. Uh, just as a disclaimer, I do not encourage the infiltration of any group with the explicit purpose of spreading disinformation for an establishment cause. I do, however, encourage the infiltration of the establishment as a means of non-violent civil disobedience. That's permissible. Step bloody six. Engage in arbitrary detention and release. I think this is the step that petrifies me the most. The repeated catch and release of the same activists at the behest of an establishment with a lot to hide in the name of highlighting the activists to the public. That's really all they do it for. And in a closed society, if you are arrested or simply recognized at a protest, your name goes on a list. Get your name on a list and Best prepare yourself for a world of hurt. And the list is permanent. You ain't ever getting off it. Have you ever been to a peace march in this era of facial recognition? Well, you're on a list. You ever speak out in public against the establishment? You're on a list. Never speak out at home? Your smartphone all but guarantees that you're on a list. And being on a list, it doesn't just mean a gang of jackboot thugs knocking on your door and kidnapping you every so often for questioning. It may also mean that air travel is no longer an option. Or they shut down your bank account. That old trick. This is standard practice. They will take away your ability to survive. Step bloody seven. Target key individuals. Let me tell you a little story, kids. Come and sit on grandpa's knee as I regale you with tales of yore. Back in my day, it was the artists and academics who were targeted for their anti-government rhetoric. These days though, these crazy kids, they all seem to be pro-government. How the hell did that happen? The key target individuals now are mostly representatives of the working class. No longer are the college academics pro-freedom. They are pro-authoritarian, pro-technocracy pro-government death squad, commie style. So if the artists and academics are on board, who do we target? Labour unions not yet bought off? Well, they don't exist. So who's left but the workers? Case in point, the truckers revolt. What's happening right now? Over the past fortnight, government figures and the corporate press have labelled drivers as anti-vaxxers, Nazis, white supremacists, even the black truckers, that's pretty clever. KKK members, domestic terrorists, and, of course, the buzzword of the early 2020s, insurrectionists. 
when really all that's happened is a bunch of hard-working blokes have parked their trucks in a peaceful protest against a faction that holds a monopoly on violence. Let's not forget that truckers are the red blood cells of any developed nation. The reason I am right now stuffing my face with cashews is because a truck driver brought them to my town. If you live in a city and have food on the table, thank a truck driver. If you have food on the table and are against the trucker's peaceful protest, man, you are beyond help and perhaps deserve some mild starvation in your life. Man, I truly cannot be bothered with these people anymore. Step bloody eight, control the press. If I were the devil, I'd have some mesmerizing media fanning the flames. That's it. Nothing more to say on this step. Look what we did. We got Trump back. I am 100% going to say it. And I 100% believe it. That if it wasn't for CNN, I don't know that Trump would have got voted out. I really don't think so. I, I came to CNN because I wanted to be a part of that. I think there's just like a COVID fatigue. So like whenever a new story comes up, they're going to latch onto it. They've already announced in our office that once the public is will be open to it, we're going to start focusing mainly on climate, climate like global warming, and it's our it's going to be our focus. Like uh, like our, our focus was to get Trump out of office, right? Without saying it, that's what it was, right? So our next thing is going to be for climate change awareness. What does that look like? It'll taper off to a point that it's you know not a problem anymore. Climate I think is going to take years, so. They'll probably be able to milk that for quite a bit. You know? so, so. Two stories are going to be pushed. Climate change is going to be the next COVID thing for CNN. Do you think it's going to be just like a lot of like fear? Like climate? Yeah, fear sells. Step bloody nine. Dissent equals treason. Oh, yes it does. Cast dissent as treason. Cast any form of criticism as espionage. Easy. Every closed society is controlled in this manner. And truthfully, many of us are fast becoming experts on the subject. Just craft a handful of hate speech laws so elaborate, so perplexing and claustrophobic, that even the mildest of slander is considered a domestic threat. All that's left to do is expand the definition of keywords like spy and traitor an insurrectionist, and you've got yourself an entire population primed for arrest should they stray from the official narrative. Let me ask you this, what's the first word that comes to mind when you hear the name Julian Assange? Journalist or spy? Hero or traitor? That this is even an argument shows just how blurred the lines of definition have become and how willing a submissive populace is to buy into the manufactured change. Under a new elaborate law, the arrest of dissenters for the most petty of charges becomes the new normal. All part of the script. Overflow the prisons, turn purity into heresy at the whim of a paid off official, and allow cultural pressure to do the rest. The number one weapon of government is cultural pressure. And it is here where the circle closes. The leader of a nation now has the power to call any citizen an enemy of the state, which allows him the fabricated right to use that citizen at his disposal. Not scary at all. Finally, step bloody 10. Suspend the rule of law. And this is where we are right now, especially in the Western world. Ain't much more to go towards total tyranny. Is that a chihuahua? Sounds like a chihuahua. You know, the Speedy Gonzalez cartoons remarkably accurate with their depiction of Mexico, I have to say. There's a lot of chihuahuas and a lot of cats and a lot of little smart-ass mice. Some fast, some slow. And they all smoke marijuana. It's extraordinary. Speedy Gonzalez was a documentary. Anyway, rule of law, suspend. Where are we up to? Let me... Jesus Christ, I've lost my train of thought. Yet again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So, whilst I'm all about eradicating government adjudicated law, that's all very well, but whilst the government still holds power, the suspension of law is downright terrifying. And to those who disagree, who would have thought that a sniffle would constitute a national emergency and act as a trigger to suspend not only the law, but common sense? 
Take a look around. How did the local police become so damn militarised without us even noticing? Where did all those National Guardsmen come from? Why is the military on the streets? Why are they patrolling our state borders? Why are they in the classroom teaching the kids? Seemed to happen overnight, didn't it? Almost as though it was planned. Obviously. This clearly violates human rights and... It highlights people-pleasing documents like the Geneva Convention as the shit paper it really is. But hey, it's for the greater good, right? Well, meet the new greater good. The new definition of altruism. It now renders every single one of us vulnerable to state-driven violence and the total shutdown of our lives, our livelihoods, and our reason for being. Perhaps that was the true definition of the greater good all along, regardless of definition. The rule of law, it is only as strong as the citizenry allows it to be. How the next few years play out is completely up to us. I said it before, I'll say it again. It's very simple. Do not comply. Now I do believe that there is one step missing from those 10 steps towards tyranny. And the template for those 10 steps, by the way, I give credit to journalist Naomi Wolf, who occasionally, occasionally, just shows glimpses of getting it. Naomi, you are so close, so close. Just get off the left-right paradigm and you're there. There is, I feel, one step missing from those 10 steps towards tyranny. And it's a pretext that laces the incremental with the required disguise to pull off such a bold move in the first place. I call it step zero. Bring society to the knee of degradation. If I were the devil, I would engulf the world in darkness by seizing the ripest apple on the tree. The. I would educate authors on how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I would threaten TV with dirtier movies. I would peddle uppers to the young and sell downers to those of mature mind. And the rest? Just tranquilize them with TV religion and the religion of TV. I would have the population convinced that we are living in a deterministic world where everything is scripted by a simulation. Where nothing matters and all is irrelevant. I would kill the incentive of the ambitious by taking from those who yearn and giving to those who demand. I would seize the means of production and destroy private enterprise. I would separate the church from the state and remove God from the courthouse, the schoolhouse and the household. I would exercise Christian values in order to extol psychology. Then I would deify science. And while we're at it, let's lure priests and pastors into misusing boys, girls and church money. Then we could promote gambling as a method of becoming rich and watch the chaos ensue. I'll allow the population to exist free of moral code and transform the strong into the weak by cautioning against hard work. Good times make weak men. Complete and utter godless degradation, alienation, annihilation. This is how the devil lures the public into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. Achieve this and the segue to step one will be a soft cinch. Thank <laughs> you.